Hey everybody, it's Harry from Slap Your Daddy Barbecue, the YouTube channel that teaches you how to master barbecue so you can spread barbecue love. Super excited to do a seafood dish today. We have some lobsters and some seafood sent to me by the nice folks at Fisherman's Net, which is moalobster.com. Kwang from uh, moalobster.com and Fisherman's Net sent me a bunch of live lobsters. We're going to show you guys how we do a cook on doing some smoke Lobster paella. Here's an overview of the ingredients that we need. We have the uh, aromatics, some celery, garlic, and onion. We have a little bit of a short grain rice. I have uh, some Italian tomatoes, a little bit of slap daddy rub, and we're ready to go. Thanks to the folks at Fisherman's Net for Kwang for sending me this little care pack. We have a whole bunch of seafood here, some New Zealand mussels. We've got some, uh, these, are, I don't know what these are, these are huge uh, kind of cockles, mussels or cherry stone. Let me see here. Uh, there's uh, going to be some scallops and uh, this one is going to be a kingfish. And uh, a few of these are ready live lobster. They came all the way from Maine. Got to California, to Los Angeles, and they are still alive and kicking. Packed with some seaweed for all natural environment. Ready to go in our special dish. Celery, onion, garlic, and a little bit of uh, herbs that you have. I have some thyme and a little bit of rosemary handy. Some bay leaf of a slap your daddy all purpose rub for salt. Once the uh, onions are translucent, we are ready to put in the tomato. 28 ounce can of Italian Roma tomatoes. I like uh, this brand, Cento. Let's add some uh, Spanish saffron. This is the uh, stamen of a uh, flower. This is the world's most expensive spice. I'm gonna add in just about that much. Paella is a one pot Spanish rice dish that really has many, many variations. And it's cooked using seafood, meats, vegetables, depending on the region in Spain. It's actually, by way of history, a fusion of two cultures. The Romans who came up with the idea for the pan, and the Arabs who brought the rice to Spain. You know, like in everything in barbecue where it's a three-hour argument and Jerry Springer fistfight, the same is true for paella. And uh, people are very passionate about the way they cook paella, and everybody claims they have the original, authentic recipe. The uh, experts sort of agree that the origin that they attribute paella is actually to the coastal Mediterranean city of Valencia in Spain on the Mediterranean coast. And uh, the pan for the paella actually originates from Roman times and it's actually a Latin word for patera, patella, or patina. So that's kind of like the name of the pan, that's how you got paella. And you know, one dish rice meals are very common around the world. If you watch my channel, we know I cook rice from around the world, including things like arroz con pollo, which is a kind of a Latin style rice with chicken. Uh, I've made a clay pot rice, which is from Asia. So carbs and protein are very, very common. And since rice is eaten around the world, there are many versions of one pot rice dish, and they tend to be very rustic because you cook it with whatever is available. So I know folks out there, you know, who are purists, they will cook a paella, but they say seafood cannot mix with land animals or meat. But, you know, this is the mixed, uh, which is a sort of a mixed uh, paella with uh, different kinds of seafood. I have some lobsters with different prepares, smoke it a little bit, and kind of top it with some shellfish that we were sent to us from the nice folks at Fisherman's Net. We're going to add uh, about one and a half cups of short grain rice. I have some California rice here. And uh, you don't really want to wash the rice because you need the starch in the rice to sort of, uh, you know, kind of create that kind of a nice starchiness that is characteristic of paella. We're going to add a little bit of a seafood broth. You can make your own seafood broth. I usually take like celery or fennel, 
cook it with uh, shallots and a little bit of wine and uh, fish bones and everything. But that's a lot of work. So a little sh professional shortcut I want to show you guys. We use uh, some of the uh, lobster base or seafood or clam base. And uh, my co-packer in Cleveland who makes my rubs, soupbase.com makes fantastic miners style uh, from Nestle soup bases. So I'm gonna use some of that soup base to make my paella. Put enough liquid in here so that we can cook the paella. And uh, once you get it in here, you wanna cook it until the rice is perfect. We'll take it out and then we'll put the seafood in a little bit. So just enough to kind of cover the rice and how much or how little is really up to you. Some people like their rice kind of wet. Some people like it dry. I like it kind of medium. And we'll let this smoke in the pit. I'm gonna close the lid. I watch the amount of moisture very carefully and I add some stock just to keep it at a point where I can get the rice to be tender. I want the liquid to all dry out so it's completely dry. And I want the sakarat to form at the bottom so that I have a beautiful crusty bottom. And I'm not gonna touch it anymore after this. So this is where it's very crucial. You have to reach the right amount of tenderness to the point where you can actually kind of let it cook on its own without disturbing the surface so that the top is pristine. We're gonna to top all that wonderful seafood. We're gonna grill it and put it on top as soon as the rice is done. All right, rice is drying up beautifully. I'm just gonna add a little bit of seasoning. Just a little bit of a touch of Slapidetti all-purpose rub. Just a touch of it. Also, because we have a lot of tomato, I'm going to add just a touch of sugar, maybe about half a teaspoon or so. In terms of technique, it's a three-hour argument and Jerry Springer fist fight again as to whether you like to stir your paella. I stir it because uh, what I want to try to do is I want it to cook evenly and then towards the end, I won't stir it anymore. So what I'll do is I'll let the burnt crust at the bottom called sokarat build up so that I have a nice crusty bottom that is highly desired when you make a paella. And uh, it takes a, quite a lot of skill to be able to create the right amount of tenderness to the grains of rice, as well as generate the perfect kind of crust or the sokarat, which is the kind of the burnt portion of the paella. So what I like to try to do is I watch it carefully. I taste it until I think that the rice is ready. I may add a little bit more stock and then does it cook on its own and let it come to a beautiful kind of like a crusty bottom on the paella. And uh, that's where you are judged on how good you are in terms of making paella is how well you do the crust without burning the rest of the dish. Don't worry about this if you just want to cook it for your friends and family. As long as the rice is tender, it's fine. You don't have to go and try to create world's class sokara. But we're going to try to see if we can accomplish that today. Rice is drying out beautifully. And I'm going to show you a little competition hack I use. Uh, I like to put the spices towards the end. I have a little bit of uh, Spanish paprika, little chili flakes, and a little granulated garlic. We're going to sprinkle this on top for a extra punch in flavor. And, uh, how much or how little you want to put of the chili is up to you. I like my paella just a little bit spicy. And when you put it at the end, it gives a kind of a nice fresh chili kick to it. And this is a competition technique, like when I win chili contests, this is what I do. I do a, what do we call a dump? A dump means that you put spices towards the end to get maximum flavor. All right, it looks like it's nice and tender. Checking the tenderness here. Wait, take, take a grain of rice and then taste it. See if it's ready. Wow, perfect tenderness. I'm gonna let it dry out a little bit more and then set it aside. And the lobster in the frozen for 30 minutes in the uh, fridge so that you kill it humanely. There are many ways to dispatch a lobster and uh, the most humane way is to put it in the freezer for about 30 minutes so it puts the lobsters to sleep and then what you want to do is you want to sever the spinal cord like this just run a knife through and it kills the lobster immediately very humanely that way the animal does not suffer. Do not put this on the grill if it's alive okay, that's not a good idea please don't do that. Here's how you prepare the claw what you want to do is you want to put your knife right here, make a cut right there. Okay, we split the claw right here and it's ready to break. Prepare the lobster a couple of different ways. We'll not do the normal half lobster here. I'll show you guys how to do it the other way. Just to kind of cut it and bring out the shell, kind of piggyback out. We do piggyback and have lobster tails here. Let's get it underneath and push it apart to the meat away from the shell. Slide your finger underneath. 
and the meat will just come apart gently like that. And you want to get rid of some of the intestinal tract here. It's not good eating. And get the meat out completely from the shell and now we do piggyback style. Okay, just rinse it off. There you have it, a piggyback style lobster. Chicken wrap. You really want to be careful when you cook your scallops and uh, when it hits about 145-ish, I like to take them off. Let's char some chunks of the kingfish or yellowtail. Medium rare is good. This is hamachi or kingfish or yellowtail. Now for the moment of truth, let's give it a taste test here, some of the paella, and you can see some of the sakarat at the bottom, which is the burnt portion, that's the best part. Yellowtail, try a piece of scallop, try to get a piece of lobster, so a little bit of a New Zealand clam, and then a uh, cherry stone clam, and this is going to be a fantastic bite right here. And uh, Beans is already uh, telling me he wants to try some seafood. Want to try some seafood, Beans? Can you eat seafood, Beans? You know? All right, let me give it a taste test first. Right, let's give it a shot. The rice, beautiful sokarat, which is the crust. Rice is perfectly cooked. All the little individual grains have absorbed the flavor of the seafood stock. The little crunchiness of the burnt crust of the rice, absolutely fantastic. When you use short grain rice, you have a beautiful individual kernels like this. You don't wash the rice because uh, you want the starch to hold the paella rice together. Absolutely, lots of great flavor on the rice. Let's give the clam a taste. It's perfectly cooked, it's grilled. You remove the clam as soon as it's cooked so it's not to overcook it. And you still have some of the clam liquor at the bottom. Let's dip it in there, give the taste test. There was a super briny taste of the ocean all the way from Maine. Let's try the New Zealand mussels. I just want to squeeze a little bit of lemon on it. Delicious New Zealand mussels. All right, let's give the scallop a shot here. This has been grilled. Just a, bit, a little bit of lemon. And I cooked it to about 145 degrees. So it's just absolutely soft and tender. Perfectly cooked, sweet scallops. Taste of the ocean. And this piece of beautiful yellowtail, just slightly charred. Just a touch of lemon here. Perfectly medium rare. Right in the middle here. Absolutely delicious. Let's attack the lobster. Absolutely gorgeous. A little bit of lemon. Look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous main lobster. The sweetness of the lobster is hard to describe. It's briny, taste of the ocean, and has a lots and lots of umami flavor. You want to be very careful not to overcook the lobster so that when you bite through it, it's nice, soft, and tender like that. See that? Super duper delish lobster. Okay, Beans, you ready to try some uh, seafood paella? I have some uh, yellowtail, lobster, scallop, and some rice for you to try. Here we go, Beans. Give it a shot. Detect the lobster, yellowtail. He's eating the paella rice now with the sokarat. And finishing up with the scallops. Wow, he seems to like it. 
I guess uh, he's just a seafood dog in addition to being a brisket dog too. Thanks for stopping by checking out my paella episode. A huge thanks to the folks at Fisherman's Net, moilobster.com for sending me this uh, little bit of a lobster love. Huge thanks to all my Patreons who help to keep the lights on on my channel. If you find value in my videos, please go ahead and consider patreon.com slash Until the next video, we will see you.